Hi, my name's Craig. Welcome to our video on how to align and set up the planar tables on our trade planar thicknesses. So stage one is making sure that your blades, your knives are set correctly in the cutter block. This particular machine has the kind of set and forget tungsten carbide spiral blades, which don't need any setup, don't need any alignment to each other. It's really just change the blade to a new sharp edge, no alignment issues, and you're ready to go. But if you've got the, uh, the, the slightly older, more traditional style planar blade knife, like this, where you've got two or three or maybe even four blades in the cutter block, it's important that you get these blades sticking out, projecting out of the cutter block an equal amount. Now, what I'd recommend for this is to ensure that you're using, as per your instruction manual, the setting jig that comes with the machine. So, for instance, in, in this particular type of jig, which, which is a really common jig, to be honest, this sits on the cutter block, follows the curvature of the cutter block, and the actual knife, which quite often is sprung loaded, will come up and sit in this little cutout just here. And we do that on each of the cutter blocks, uh, blades. So you just push this down on top of your blades. Blade comes up into this cutout and it's locked in position. And you do that the two, the three, the four times that you need to, depending on how many blades you've got. But that, that's stage one. Without that blades, without the blade set correctly, you're just not gonna get the required finish or the, the, the full you know, clean performance out of the machine that you should. So what we're gonna look at in, in quite some detail is how to get these two tables aligned with each other. So they're, they're parallel along the cut line and they're in line along the length. So you've got the, the in-feed and out-feed tables in the same orientation. So when you drop the in-feed table to take a depth of cut, you don't end up with, with getting any snipe and all your cuts are kind of level, cleaner and parallel. And although we're using this kind of uh, kind of high level uh, spiral planar thicknesser, some of this thinking can carry over to all planar thicknesses. So you can use these setup tips to, to set your, your planar thicknesser regardless of, of type. So the key thing before you start getting into the cutter block and start adjusting tables and getting close is to ensure that you've unplugged, okay, every time. Um, not just switch off, let's, let's unplug just in case. So step one is making sure your blades are correct. Uh, step two, really, uh, what I do is ensure that my outfeed table is in the correct position in relation to my blades, whether it's these spiral blades or the, the, the regular straight knife blades. And this is quite an easy check. So the method that I've used to ensure that this, this table, the outfeed table, is, is correct in, in relation to the, the, my, my cutters and blades is, is something that I, I was taught, I don't know, about 30 years ago from my old boss. And, and it's a method that I use to check my table alignment every time I come to set up a plane of things. So, so the first thing that I do is like, I just get myself a, a piece of wood like this, I don't know, 12, 14 inches long, something like that. And I'm gonna make two marks. I'm gonna make two little lines, three to four millimeters apart, okay? Just two simple little lines like that. Now, I have seen a lot of guys actually do this with the ruler, but personally, I don't like doing that because I don't like putting steel rulers to my blades. I'd rather a bit of wood, and I'm absolutely assured there's, there's no damage from the steel ruler on my blade. So, I'm going to put a bit of wood on my tables. All right, I'm only really focusing on the, the outfeed table at this point. I'm going to line, line up the first line with the edge of the table just here, as you can see. Then I'm going to rotate my cutter block and what I'm looking for is for that blade just to pick up a piece of timber and then drop it back down on that second line, just there like that. Now that tells me that this particular section of the table is in the correct height in relation to your, your cutter. If it picked up and moved it a lot, I don't know, 10, 12 mil, now that's gonna give you snipe. What I wanna do from this point is just come over to the other side of the cutter block. Now that'll tell me that 
this edge here is parallel and straight to my cut edge. It's not removing more on this side than this side. So again, exactly the same thing on, on this side of the table. We're just going to put our line in line with the edge of the table, our, line, our first line here. And then we're going to rotate the cutter block until it picks up a piece of timber and then drops it. Well, you can see here we've just dropped just past our second line. So we're not the three or four millimetres, we're more like six or eight millimetres. So that tells me now that this particular side of the cutter block is too low and I could end up with sniping if I'm machining in this area. What I need to do there is lift this side of the table. So that's what we're going to do first. So to access the adjustment on this side of the table, it's really easy. It's probably the easiest adjustment we can do on this machine. So let's just slide that out of the way. We're going to unlock and lift the table up. So once you've got the table up, you've got access to the adjustment. This one locks the table in place, and these two are the little adjusting screws, which when the table down, go against the underside of the table. Now, at this point, I will uh, strongly recommend you make minor adjustments, okay? We're not looking to wind knobs and handles and nuts and bolts a lot. It's just very fine movements. If I'm adjusting something, it's probably going to be only a quarter of a turn at the most each time. But for, before I do that, I would like to get a marker pen. And I'm just going to put a little line through there like this, and maybe like this. Now that just gives me a reference point to really how much I'm turning, almost like a little dial gauge of some script. I'm going to hold this one. This is the lock. This is the adjuster. Now I want this, I want the, the table to come up a little bit, just a little bit, so I don't have so much cutter block exposed and it's dragging the timber too far over. So I'm just going to unlock first. Okay and then wind my knob up such a small amount. You see that? It's probably not even quarter of a turn. And then I'll lock it again. At this point, I'm not touching this one. It's just this one I'm going to be doing. And the only way to try it is to drop the table down. Make sure it's locked in position each time that you check alignment. We'll get our bit of wood again lining up as before, putting it in the same position as we had it before, and we'll just rotate these blades until it picks it up and drops it down. There. And there we go. You can just see it's moved that amount now. And I'll just double check it that I've got the same reading on this side. Yeah, that's fine. So that's the same amount of movement with the blades just picking up the material and dropping it down in the same spot. So really, I'm happy now that this table is parallel with my cutting edge. Like I say, whether it's this spiral type or the straight blade, that's a really nice and easy method to do the adjustments. From there, once I'm happy with this table, I'm then gonna focus on my in-feed table. So next stage is to ensure, once I'm, you know, I'm happy with the thickness of table position, which I am, it looks good, it's lock solid and it's, it's parallel with my cut edge, I want to make sure that my in-feed table lines up with my out-feed table. And that's an easy thing to do. I just want to check this alignment along the length, along the length of the tables. So that's what I'm going to be looking at next. For this, you'll need a, a kind of reliable straight edge, really. It can be, uh, you know, a shop bought proper straight edge that you know straight. Maybe a nice, clean, straight-looking, undamaged spirit level, but uh, just something that you think is, is, is straight enough for you. So I'm going to bring my in-feed table up to the same level using my kind of normal uh, surface planer adjustment. I'm going to bring this up to the same level as my out-feed table. So when I've got this in-feed table wound up to what I think is just the same level as my, uh, my out-feed table, what I'm looking for now, I'm going to rotate the blades out of the way, 
and I'm just going to see if this edge is exactly in line with this edge. Um, you can put your straight edge across it and try and have a look underneath for any lights, or you can get a feeler gauge, of course. But what I tend to do is keeping this flat on the table, I'm looking to see if this corner comes into contact just here. That's nice and clean, how about this way? Yeah, that's great. And the, the edge of the straight edge isn't catching on either of these tables. Let's check the other side of the cutter block. Okay. So that now tells me that although this is in the correct place, because we did it with a bit of wood and a couple of little pencil marks, this side of the table is ever so slightly lower than this side of the table. So that's an adjustment I'm going to make on this side. Very similar to the way I adjusted this, uh, the outfeed table. I'm going to adjust the infeed table in the same way. Just that little bit of adjustment is taking off, has brought this table up ever so slightly, so this is in line with this. Check I haven't done too much. Lovely. No catching there. No catching there. Raise out of the way. No catching there. No catching there. That's great. So perfectly aligned in this area. So with the straight edge fully pressed down on the outfeed table, I can see how, you know, whether the, the infeed table is actually in line with the outfeed. Now I can see from this gap that, that it isn't in line. I mean, it looks an awful lot, but that light is, is quite deceiving, really. It looks like a couple of millimetres there, but it isn't, I can assure you, because, you know, I've had the, had the feeler gauge in there and half a millimetre, 0.5 just goes under. So that actually tells me that this end of the um, table is, is just a little bit low. All right. And then from there what I'll do is come over to the other side of the table making sure blades are out of the way. It's not quite half a millimetre but it, it's still a little bit low. Now what I've got to do is make adjustments to the machine just to, to bring this table, this end, up a very, very small amount. So we need to make these adjustments. Now, we've looked at adjustment for the tables on this side, so it's just the same in this area. So we lift this up, flip the table up, and we can see these little stoppers here. Because the infeed table is, is ever so slightly low this end, we just need to make the adjustments to, to lift it. So with the little stop bolt, which is about here, we make a subtle adjustment pushing the stop bolt up bringing this back end of the table up. But the adjustment is really small. So we need to adjust this stop bolt here. So one spanner on, another spanner on, just holding the position of this. I've got the pen mark on there ready, so I know where I started at. I'm just going to undo subtly. Tiny turn. That's probably just a bit less than a quarter of a turn, because a little bit of movement here equals quite a lot of movement at the end of the table here. So be very subtle with these adjustments and make sure it's pinched in place without moving again. So that kind of takes care of alignment on this side of the table. But we've also got to look at and make a subtle adjustment on this side of the table, which is a little bit more complicated, but still not that difficult. But we do have to access the back of the machine and take one or two panels off. All right, so I'm just going to spin the machine around so you guys can see the, the back side of the machine. Got a wheel kit on my plane of thickness here, which makes moving around the workshop if I need to very, very simply. Because one thing you don't want to do with the plane of thickness, you put the time and effort into leveling these tables. You don't want to just be dragging it and lifting it around the workshop uh, without a wheel kit, because you will throw the alignment of the tables out. Right, so as I said, there's, there's a little bit of. Uh, you know, panel removal here uh, to access the adjustment here, but it isn't something that you've got to do a lot. It's kind of set it up once, set it up right, and providing, like I say, you haven't dragged the machine around by its tables, it should stay where it is. So first thing I need just to take out of my way is the fence holder bracket. So two Allen screws.
So popping that cover off here, it gives us access to the adjusters for adjusting alignment, adjusting the level of the table on this side, kind of what would ordinarily be the, the far side of your planer in use. But I'll span it around to, to help you guys see what's going on. Um, I'm working on this side of the planer now. We can just see these threaded adjusters just there, just for raising or lowering the table to get it in line with our already set um, outfeed table. So now, I'm just gonna make that adjustment. Now I know that this end of the table's gotta come up a really small amount. So this is where I'm gonna be, just in here. And it's again gonna be such a subtle adjustment. So I wanna grip the bottom 10 mil, grip the top 10 mil, and I'm gonna keep the top 10 mil in the same position and undo the bottom. Undoing that bottom nut. I'm gonna go kinda half a turn I think. And then I'm gonna wind this nut down. In effect, what happens is it pushes that side of the table up. But guys, I'm gonna make such a small adjustment. Again, quarter turn will, I'm sure, be enough. There we go. So keeping this in position, I then lock the bottom one. Okay. What I can do now is check this alignment. Before I put the covers back on, I'll be, I'll be checking. I'll make sure the table's locked on that far side. So feeler gauge, before we had about 0.5, a half a millimeter of feeler gauge we could get underneath uh, the tables here. So I've dropped that down to 0.25, so a quarter of a millimetre, which I think along the table length here is acceptable tolerance. So landing anywhere along here. I can get that feeler gauge just will not go underneath. And it's telling me the alignment of these two tables on this side is really, really good. So we've checked this side. I can't get a 0.25 underneath anywhere along the length. I'm gonna go back over to the original side I adjusted just in case it kind of kicked and shifted. Don't think it did. And again, I can't get a 0.25 anywhere along the length of these tables. So now I'm confident that I have my outfeed table set parallel with my cutting edge, okay? I've not got the table too low, so I'm going to get that sniping. I've set my infeed table in alignment with my outfeed table. It's the same on both sides. Don't just work on the middle. Let's work on both sides. Make sure the cut is, is true all the way along it, its full width of cut. So that's table set up. Let's put these panels back on, put the fence back on, and look at fence squaring. Right, yep. Yeah. Okay, so blades are set well, blades are sharp. Outfeed table is set in the correct height in relation to those blades. Infeed table is in line with the uh, outfeed table. Um, so one thing I've got to do is just ensure my fence now is square to the bed. So that's an easy thing. Engineer square. So let's check for square. Like I say, trusty engineer square. And I can see the gap at the top here and we've got, we've got a gap there. This fence isn't square to this table. Now, if you want square timber to come out of your planer, you must make sure this happens. You must square the fence to the table. So let me show you how to do that. We need to be around the back of the machine to access a couple of very simple small adjusters. Right, so we've got to make some adjustment because our fence isn't square to our table. So first thing I do is, is unlock this quadrant here. Get a 10 mil, little Allen key goes in. 
I'll unlock and then there's a little threaded bolt that goes through here that can give you adjustment one way or the other way depending on how uh, which way your, your fence is out of square so let me just make that adjustment Right, so to recap, well set sharp blades, outfeed table set to those blades. Remember the little pencil marks there, just that amount of movement prevents the snipe with the table, the outfeed table being too low. Once we've set the outfeed table, we brought the infeed table into alignment with the outfeed table making adjustments on the big stop bolts and then the slightly finer adjustment on this side as well. We squared our fence, so I'm happy that this, this surface, this, this whole planar top surface here is going to perform, it's going to cut really, really well. There's only one thing left for me to do and that's to apply some machine wax to the tables to ensure whatever, that I, whatever I put over the top of the tables slides smoothly. It's also a good kind of corrosion rust preventative as well if, you, if you're in one of those damn workshops. So, uh, so hopefully you found this, uh, this very useful and you can, you can tweak and fine-tune your planer to perfection. Thanks very much. Bye now.